because my feelings are hurt by this, I am entitled to force you, to coerce you, to do things that you've already voiced that you don't like, that you don't feel safe to do, and that you don't want to do. Okay, hi everybody, thanks for coming back if you've been here before, or hi, welcome if you're new. My name is Mickey, I'm a therapist, and we talk about therapisty things on this channel. Today, we're talking about Chapel Roan, which might not seem related to our normal content, but it is, because she recently posted a statement about boundaries and like her setting boundaries with her fans in the public at large, which I'm very excited about. <laughs> but um, a lot of people are not very excited about it. So we're going to talk about that today. I also have an exciting announcement for you about uh, Parade. So stay tuned for that. But in the meantime, I want to talk about Chapel Roan and her like pretty authoritative statement that she put up on Instagram um, and what that means for her personally and like, you know, specifically, but also what that means for us as like the mass public broadly um, and why I'm excited about it. So let's get into all of that. First and foremost, um, I am not gonna read you the whole statement verbatim because it is quite long, actually. We are gonna talk about the sort of general themes that she posted on Instagram because I think it's relevant. For those of you who are not aware, Chapel Roan obviously has had kind of like a meteoric rise to fame over the summer, and that has come with some complications in the sense that there are now a lot, a lot of people who are very interested in Chapel Roan as like a public figure and her art, but also her personally, and this has culminated in apparently a lot of boundary crossings, including people stalking her, um, doxing her family, stalking her family to work and things like that, but also things like touching her and violating her personal space and really like an adult, attitude of entitlement about her emotional availability and this sense of like ownership over her and her mind and her art and her body also. She's had people touching her literally. And so this obviously has created some problems, which is why she posted her whole statement in the first place. I am gonna link her Instagram account in the description. So if you wanna go read it for yourself, you can. It's just up on her like, feed. Generally, as far as takeaways, what we're talking about is that she only wants to be available for fan interactions and things like that while she is like, quote unquote, clocked in. Essentially to mean that like at shows, at events, at press things, right? Like publicly facing events that are, you know, time where she's being chapel Roan. Um, those are the moments where she wants to be available for fan interactions and things like that. But outside of that, she wants to be kind of like clocked out is how she expressed it. The other key boundary that she expressed in this is that she wants her family and her friends to be left out of this, right? Especially the people like, you know, they are not famous. They didn't consent to all of this attention. So there was also an ask to like stop being weird with her family and her friends, stop following them, stop stalking her, stop harassing them. She also asked that people not touch her and violate her physical space, which is like a wild thing to have to ask in the first place. But again, that was like kind of a key takeaway. And the other, uh, like the fourth, like main thing here was to stop calling her by her legal name. That's kind of it. Like I said, I'm not gonna read the whole statement because it is quite long, but as far as like core takeaways, that's really what we're working with, which I don't think is really that controversial, personally. I don't know, maybe that's a weird take. Maybe that's just because I'm a therapist. To be fair, the general public has responded really positively. There are a lot of people who are like, yes, Boundaries Queen, we love her. Very excited about this for her, which I obviously agree with. And I'm excited that we as the public have kind of moved into this space where we're like, publicly celebrating and championing someone setting boundaries for themselves. But there's also been a good amount of backlash, I would say. If you look at the comments, I'll post some of the comments, actually we'll censor the usernames, but I'll post some of the comments that are on other posts in her feed, cause she did turn comments on that off. And they're pretty rancid. The comments that people are leaving her are really fucking gross and like mean also. So I wanna sort of unpack some stuff in regards to the boundary setting. Again, I really just wanna emphasize the point that what she's asking for are like general, I think they're generally agreed upon behaviors that you and I would abide by with like other normal people and especially strangers. That's also been kind of at the core of this boundary setting is that she's expressing essentially that we are just normal people and so is she. And so it's not normal to go up to a perfect stranger and touch them or grab them or try to talk to them or insist that you are entitled to hold a conversation with them or take a picture with them, those kinds of things. And so that feels like a fair and acceptable boundary for her, which I agree with. I think our societal attitude about people who are in the public eye has really 
gone downhill in recent years and turned into a sense of entitlement and ownership that's very dehumanizing and like really bad for people's mental health, both our mental health and especially the people who are in the public eye. Okay, before we go any further, I do wanna to talk to you about this week's sponsor, which is Parade. I'm delighted to work with Parade again. For those of you that don't know, Parade is a community and sustainability oriented brand that makes all manner of cute and cozy things, but I especially am obsessed with the bras that they make because they're cute and cozy and comfortable. For those of you that don't know, I had a breast reduction last year. I have always been a firm believer that underwear and like clothes generally should be fun and expressive, but even pre-reduction Parade was one of my favorite brands because I could actually fit into all of their bras and they were also comfortable and I could wear them all day long. They didn't bother me or pinch me in weird places. So post-reduction, I am especially a fan of their bras because with smaller boobies, I'm kind of a bra hater, I won't lie. <laughs> I don't really wanna wear bras most of the time, but parade bras I will always wear because they're cozy and comfortable and I really don't feel like I'm wearing a bra at all, honestly. I am especially transfixed by this new bra that I got from Parade. It's called the Vintage Soft Scoop Bralette in new cotton. The color is called Bandana. Look how fun this is! It's cute and it's cozy and it's comfortable and it's just expressive and fun, which again, I just think that underwear and like our clothes should be fun and also be representative of like all bodies, which is one of the things that I love about Parade the most, which is that they celebrate you as you are right now. So like I mentioned, pre-reduction, I felt very celebrated, but also as a plus size person, it's really hard to find companies that show the products on people of varying body sizes and Parade is wonderful about that. So I just feel very at home. I feel very represented by Parade and in Parade. I think it's clear that I'm a Parade fanboy and I'd love to share the magic of that with you too. So go click the link in the description. You can use my code Mickey50 to get 50% off site wide, which is wild. So go click that link, use my code Mickey50, show some love to yourself and to your body. And thank you so much to Parade for sponsoring this week's video. Let's go ahead and hop back in. The thing that is especially funny to me, I guess not funny, but like, not funny haha, -ha, but like funny in an interesting way, is that this whole kerfuffle about Chapel Roan setting boundaries for herself is kind of at the center of the the issue for these people who are upset about it, right? And there's a couple of things about this that are strange to me. The first of which is that a lot of the boundaries that she's setting are related to interactions with her physically or like in person, right? Which I think it's fair to say that for a good amount of us, the odds that we will either run into her in public, just like out and about, or to have the opportunity to like meet her personally are relatively low considering how many of us there are and now there's only one of her. So a lot of these really strong reactions, like these very vitriolic comments on her Instagram are about a potential one day interaction that may or may not ever actually materialize, but also about the fact that she is essentially setting boundaries about herself. We've we've talked ad nauseum on this channel about boundaries generally as a refresher, for, or for those of you who are new. Boundaries are about things we do with and for ourselves, right? Boundaries are not a way that we try to force other people to do things, and so, for example, a boundary is not saying to like a mom who's problematic to you that you will go to therapy, that you have to, you know, do X, Y, or Z, and that, you know, I'm forcing you to A, B, or C, right? That's not what a boundary is. That's you trying to control somebody. A boundary is saying, hey, you are not a safe person for me right now. And so because that's happening, I am going to not attend events that you're gonna be there or like we're gonna have very limited contact or we're only gonna have contact over the phone or, you know, et cetera, et cetera, right? We're, those are all things that you're doing with yourself. You're not telling this person, you know, but, 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 but you have to do these things. You're simply communicating, these are the things that I'm gonna do in response to your behaviors that feel unsafe to me. If at some point in the future, you do go to therapy or you do do some work on yourself and your behavior changes so that you do become a safer person for me, then we can renegotiate what that looks like, right? But at this present moment, this is the way that I'm choosing to respond to this set of circumstances or stimuli or your behaviors in order to keep myself safe. That's, I think, the healthiest way to set a boundary. This is something I talk to my clients a lot, about a lot, especially when we go no and low contact with like problematic family or friends or, you know, whoever. And so her doing this is setting boundaries in a really healthy way, actually. She's not telling her fans. I mean, she is in some ways about telling them like not to use her legal name, et cetera, which I think is fair. There's also like a limited amount that she can realistically do <laughs> in terms of like, you know, removing herself as a, a public figure, right? She's not having one-on-one -on -one interactions with us all. Um, if you asked your family to not use like your dead name, for example, you can say, I'm no longer gonna be in contact with you. but 
with the public, we can't really do that, right? It's not like she's gonna be out here issuing cease and desist to random strangers. So in some ways she is saying like, you know, don't do X, Y, or Z, but a good amount of what she's communicating is limits around her physical self, uh, around her time and emotional availability, and around her like life force, essentially, like her energy. All of those are things that I think she has like the ultimate say so, like she owns those things, right? We all have ownership over our own bodies, first of all, but also our time and attention, our energy and our bandwidth, right? And so her communicating that like, when I'm clocked out and I'm with my family, I don't want to be pressured to turn it on for you and to be this larger than life person for you. I wanna be able to just be with my family. That's her saying, if you approach me for a picture, I'm gonna say no. And I'm going to give myself the permission to not have to give you my time and attention and energy. That's about her and herself. Like that's a very healthy way to set boundaries. And I think the other thing about this that is a little bit odd and like interesting to me is that I think it's fair to say the bulk, the majority of Chapel Roan's fan base is gonna be people who skew younger, right? Like millennial people, Gen Z people. And these are people who, statistically speaking, are much more likely to be engaging in this behavior, this pattern of like, setting boundaries with our family of origin, right? Um, of having gone to therapy and learned about how, you know, if someone, mostly family, this happens a lot with family, um, is being problematic, you are allowed to set boundaries with them and to take back that ownership of yourself, of your time, of your attention, of your energy, and say, these are the things that I'm gonna do with myself if you're not being a safe person for me. And in essence, Chapel Roan is doing this for herself, but for this generation of people who are probably doing this with their family or with their parents or with other loved ones or with people at work or whatever, this is now all of a sudden like an attack on them. Like I just, it's an interesting little bit of hypocrisy in this whole situation that I think is important to call attention to because it's really important that if we are going to be people who put our foot down and like live by a principle in the sense that like, you know, my family doesn't get to tell me what I have to do with myself or my attention, then we should also embody and live that principle with other people, right? When we're on the other side of that equation, we should be just as willing to receive that and to respond with respect and kindness and compassion. Because that's the other thing about this whole situation that I wanted to also address is that at the core, the folks who are really, really upset about this and who are, especially the folks who are saying things about how like you're a public figure, you knew what you were getting into, you know, you should have been, you know, um, prepared for this to happen to you, blah, blah, blah. It kind of communicates this feeling of like, or this expectation rather that like my feelings of hurt and disappointment about again, what is most likely I think a, a hypothetical or theoretical potential interaction not happening are more important than your ability to own yourself, your time, your attention, and to make decisions about how you use those things. And so therefore, because my feelings are hurt by this, I am entitled to force you, to coerce you, to do things that you've already voiced that you don't like, that you don't feel safe to do, and that you don't want to do. That's like a very violent thing to do to someone, actually. And so in this discourse about how celebrity should come along with this expectation of being, you know, mobbed by people or, you know, asked for photos and all of this stuff. Like, I understand that to some degree it is, I guess, part of the job to be more publicly seen, but I don't think it's fair to say being a public figure means that other people are more entitled to your body, to your time, to your energy than you are as a person. Like, that's what dehumanization is. And I think, I mean, we use this word dehumanization a lot and it has sort of like lost its meaning, I think. Um, so I do just wanna kind of ground us in what the actual like lived impact of that is, which is that there really are people on the internet who are saying, even though the odds of me meeting you are maybe potentially pretty low, my feelings of hurt are more significant than your right to make decisions about your own body, your time and attention. And so therefore, I am entitled to coerce you to do things that you don't wanna do. We as a, a mass are more entitled to force you and to coerce you to do things that you don't wanna do. Like that is so cuckoo banana pancakes and like again, a really violent and hurtful thing to do. And especially because this is coming from people who are saying, I love you so much. Your music has touched me so much. I value the things that you've created so much that I want to force you into coerced servitude to me. Ooh, ick, like that's no, that's not the energy. That is not what genuine compassion or appreciation for somebody's creation 
or artistry or existence looks like, and especially the the parallel here between the way that parents are speaking to their children in a very coercive manner and the way that fans speak to public figures, that language is really similar, right? There are societal expectations attached to those roles in the sense that like as a parent who has, um, you know, reared a child, there is a feeling of entitlement and expectation, right? I gave you life, I gave you uh, shelter, I gave you food, I gave you energy, I gave you time, I gave you attention, um, I paid for your things, right? There's a lot of parallels here that are happening between these people who are big, like super fanatic uh, fans of Chaperone saying like, we pay for your things, we give you our time, we give you our attention, we're the reason that you're famous and so therefore we are entitled to X, Y, or Z, right? Like I just wanna draw the parallels there because I think it's pretty like generally accepted amongst, especially like, again, younger folks who have gone to therapy and done a lot of this uh, self-empowerment work. There, The parallels there are pretty striking in the sense that there is a, a desire to feel seen and to feel valued and to feel respected. But then when the shoe is on the other foot, there is a pretty fervent desire for some folks, certainly not for all of them. I think it's a, probably a small majority that are just really loud. But there is a desire to say, I am still entitled to this because your societal role as a public figure means that you are therefore stripped of any right to make decisions or set boundaries about yourself or your time or your attention. In Chapel Roan's statement, one of the things that she spoke about specifically was that the parallel for her felt like when people say because someone was wearing a particular outfit, they deserved to be assaulted or treated in a particular way. And so therefore, because Chapel's a public figure, she should you know, she deserves to be treated some type of way. People were really bothered by this equivalency, which I really don't think is that inaccurate, honestly. But again, I just want to point out that in this moment where somebody who has such a massive influence and the ability to affect change, her being an advocate for people advocating for their bodily autonomy and their right to be respected, that's a win for us all, right? If you disagree with the particular way that she phrased that, I suppose that that's your business. But again, regardless of our feelings about it, I do just really wanna be clear that when somebody who's a public figure that has such massive influence and like pull on social norms advocates for something like bodily autonomy and respecting people, we all win, right? Especially people who are typically treated um, or subjected to misogyny, right? That we bear the negative impact of things like misogyny and, and patriarchal expectations, right? Her advocating for people respecting boundaries and, and I think honestly just kind of putting your foot down and saying, these are my boundaries and I'm not engaging with you if you don't respect them, that is a win for us all. And especially in a time where there is a hope for public figures to be advocating for like a social cause and to be creating a positive social change, it feels upsetting and rude and disappointing, honestly, to have this very loud minority of people saying like, we see you advocating for positive public change in the sense that we should all respect each other's boundaries. And no, like, fuck that. Fuck you, fuck no. We're not expect or accepting your boundaries. Like, no, that's not what being a member of positive communal change looks like, right? Especially again, in like an election year, in a time where there's a lot of discourse about being community members and being checked in with our loved ones and like, you know, the people that we share space with physically and politically and theoretically, it's really important to learn how to be a good community member. And sometimes that will mean that even though we don't feel great or maybe we feel disappointed, because I won't lie to you, right? Like in theory, like I love Chapel Roan. I think she's so fucking cool. In theory, it makes me sad that if I did ever actually run into her in public that I would have to be like, you know, not say anything. But I, again, being a good community member means that it's okay for me to be disappointed about it, right? I can just feel disappointed and that's it. Like you can just feel how you feel and process that and maybe talk to your, your people about that, but also choose to recognize that that feeling is not a, an important enough thing to violate somebody else's protection in this community, right? I just really want to be clear that community care and 
you know, participating again in positive social change for like the collective means that we will sometimes have to abide by community norms that are kind of sad or maybe are a little disappointing for us, right? It's fun to be the person who reaps all the benefits and gets all of the good and is first in line all the time, but that's not a realistic expectation when we talk about really caring for the collective. So I think, again, Chapel Roan, who has like a world of influence right now, having a very firm and clear stance about boundaries is a positive thing. It's a win for us all. And I hope that, I mean, I'm sure most of the people who are watching this um, probably don't need the PSA, but for what it's worth, I hope that we can all get on board with that and just celebrate somebody who is a pretty vocal, queer and femme person being like, yes, boundaries. No, I'm not taking your excuses. No, I'm not taking your bullshit. And no, this is not a conversation, right? That's another thing that she communicated in the comment section of her post that like, she turned the comments off on this specifically because she doesn't need input. She doesn't need feedback. She's not interested in people's opinions about it. This is her boundary and that's it. Like that's that's all there is to it. And again, I think this is a positive thing that we should be celebrating and uplifting and like really taking cues from in this moment. Like I said, I don't imagine that most of the folks who are either in my audience or are watching this video are gonna need the PSA, but I appreciate the uh, investment anyways. Um, and I hope that this was, I don't know, like good food for thought. If you like the video, you can like the video. Thank you again to Parade for sponsoring this week's video. Go click that link. And then you can subscribe. We do stuff like this and we do an educational moment that I'd love to have you stay for also. Um, and don't forget to share the video to help each other grow and to help the channel grow. Was that backwards? It doesn't matter. I'll see you guys next Saturday. Okay, bye.